So let's start with the vSphere client. Okay, as I mentioned, when you've got a virtual machine which doesn't exist in your system and you want it to be able to bring it back in, that's called registering. So I'm going to unregister a virtual machine so that we can then register it and go through that exercise. First, I'm going to note uh, this new VM we just created, Production 03. It's located on this data store right here, local DS 10031. And uh, don't ask me what 10031 is. That must have been an old IP scheme that I was using previously. Anyway, let's go ahead and remove it. Now, I'm not going to delete from disk. I'm going to just perform the remove from inventory. And that way it will remain. And you can see the action there in vCenter. It's calling this task an unregister. So now it might make perfect sense for you why I keep calling it register to bring it back in. It's the opposite of unregister, of course. So production three is gone. Now let's go to our console window. Okay, get VM productions asterisk. And I see just my one and my two. Now in order to register a virtual machine, let's look back at the new-vm commandlet. Here's the parameter set we're working with. The most important for this particular mode is the VM file path. Let's examine the help file for new-vm and see what it has to say about this. We go page down until we see the VM file path. I see location, data store, vapp, disk MB, disk storage format, lots of interesting things, not the one that I'm looking for. HA, DRS, VM swap file policy, and it's got to be the one at the bottom, doesn't it? OS customization spec, there we go. VM file path. So specify a path to the virtual machine you want to register. This is not giving me any hints as, but as to what this thing needs to look like. And I already know the answer to this question, but I'm showing you how, how to find the answer because I want to definitely um, teach you how to, how to learn how to do this. Okay, so there's the example I was looking for. In this example, they're starting off by changing directory to a certain location, which is uh, basically browsing one of your data stores and uh, grabbing a VMX file and then using that VMX file path and giving it to, to register. So let's do that. We're going to start off here with VM stores. Let's explain where this comes from. Git ps drive. When, I, when you perform a connect VI server, one of the things that happens after it creates that connection is it creates a couple of PS drives. And you can see them here. They're uh, Vim something, Vim inventory and Vim data store. And you can see the difference here is uh, one is the, the last connected server and the other one is uh, all connected servers. So inventory is basically a browsable list of what is in your inventory. They could be uh, folders, virtual machines, hosts, uh, everything that is in the tree view of your vSphere client as part of your inventory. Data store is uh, basically just dealing with your data stores. So we're going to be able to view the files in the data store. So let's change to this as if it were a drive, which is exactly how PowerShell sees it. So I just type VM stores colon hit enter oops let's try that again with the cd okay now you can see now that i've got the name of my virtual center server is right there with an at sign followed by a port number and i'm just going to descend in this into this you can see now i've got the name of my basement let's do a directory again now we're getting somewhere these are the names of my data stores. And you may recall that uh, this is the data store in particular where I expect to find my production 03 VMX file. And there it is, CD production 03. Now we are getting somewhere. So let's do a dir star.vmx. That returns one file. I'm going to take that and assign it to a variable. So we'll just say f equals. Now I'm going to pipe this to format list, and we've got lots of details here. 
the most important of which is the data store full path. So note the format of this. We have the name of the data store in square brackets, followed by space, followed by the path, and this is definitely using the, the Linux uh, or Unix style forward slash, followed by the name of the VMX file. This is exactly what the new VM commandlet needs. Instead of having to guess and to think about where the data store is and so on and so forth, this is why I'm showing you how to get this information uh, so that you'll know how to get it later. So I've got this F object and it's got the data store full path property that I need to re-register this virtual machine. So let's do new dash VM and I don't have to be C in this location where I can go back to my C drive if I want to. In fact, let's clear the screen. Okay, now I still have F data store full path. That's the, the information that I need. In fact, we'll just call that VMX equals. So if you can see what I did, I basically just took the string, which was part of this property, and signed it to a, a whole new object or variable in PowerShell. So that's going to make it even easier to deal with. So let's say new dash VM and VM file path, VMX. And I believe VM host is still required, so let's do that. That should be most of it right there. Now, uh, you do have to make sure that the VMX file and the, the data store in question is accessible to the VM host. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message. Let's look at our console. Note that it says reconfigure and register. And now it's done. And there is our virtual machine, which had previously be, been unregistered. Now it is registered. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.